Hello and welcome by the Orchid Saga. So yeah, today I want to uh, unmount this one. This is uh, one of the gifts that I did get from Inza Orchids. And it's the Celebensis. Celebensis. And I just watered it a little bit to hopefully make the roots a little bit more flexible. But most of them are not really attached to the mount. And only a few here. I can see... Do we have more on the mounts? Not really. So it shouldn't be. Well, actually here we have one. So I'm going to sacrifice those roots, but though that one is already dried up because I probably cannot uh, give it enough, enough water in my setup. But we have the growing tips still. It came with growing tips, but they are back to growth. And you can see a few there. So this is a perfect time to do a uh, repot on it. And hopefully get these guys to grow in a uh, self-watering setup. So that's uh, what we're going to do today. So first uh, job is to get out of the mound. Let me uh, first get the tag off. And one root is uh, attached to the tag, apparently. <laughs> but it should come off. Yes, there it is. Fairly easily. So I'm going to put it aside. I did already make a tag of my own, a black one, because I like them a little bit better. But here we go, we have some uh, fishing wire that needs to come off. Well, maybe I should do it on the back. Yeah, there it's easier to reach. Just gonna cut these fishing lines there. Let me see. And then most of the arc is already coming off. This root we just uh, saw, we're going to sacrifice and it's already drying up. So it doesn't matter that much. And I think that's the only one that was really attached to the mount. So let me... Uh, yeah, there it is. We have a mount and now we have an orchid. <laughs> a bit of fishing line, a bit of marsh that I don't need in my setup. So that's what I'm going to take off as well. And we have some older roots, some dead roots, so I'm going to cut those off. We don't need those as well, so there we go. Oh, we have one more left here. So there we go. So we have... Uh, some beautiful roots to work with. So this should go fairly well, I think. So what I'm now going to do now is I'm going to clean up and then we will uh, start uh, repotting this uh, orchid in a new setup. So here we are again. I did grab my pot. As you can see, it's not uh, very clean. So this is a uh, pot that I have been using before, but that's okay. A water meter. Same story, been using that before. Um, and some uh, pumice, of course. The bigger pumice, as you can see. So my fells do really like it. So therefore uh, I use this uh, these days for the fells because it has some fairly uh, room for the roots, but also some air in the pot. So that's nice. But uh, yeah, so the, first I'm going to make a layer. I think about this height, so what the reservoir would be. I'm going to make some noise. And that's because these roots are not adapted to a cell watering setup. So I will not uh, try to get them too wet. But, uh, and therefore I'm going to up put them above the reservoir. So now I've tried to find a nice place for them. They are fairly long. I don't want to break them. There we go. Just taking my time in this process because, like I said, don't want to break them. So therefore, I'm just slowly try to find a nice place for the roots and for the plant to be. We have a new root there. It needs to go in. And once I have all roots in, I try to get the plant a little bit more in the middle of the pot. Especially with those new roots, I want them to 
be at the media quite quickly so they can grow inside of the pot and not go all aerial. Later on, I don't mind aerial roots, but I need quite some roots inside of the pot so I can water this properly. And I'm just slowly filling up. This pot with the, with the pumice. And wiggling it a little bit so it falls all into place. And so far it looks something like this. You can see we need a bit more of the pumice. And I do see I missed a little bit of sphagnum moss. So I'm going to take that out like this. So a bit more pumice underneath the leaves. Tapping the pot a little bit once again to get the pumice nicely throughout the pot. You can use even a bit more. Just a little bit, like so. So I have some roots just above the pumice. I will uh, give them some time and they will uh, grow into the pumice on their own. So I don't bury them all if not necessary. And the only thing that I now need to do here on this table is to give it a layer of pebbles. And I have the pebbles just next to me here. Just to avoid any dry top layers, especially in summer. That's why I started using the pebbles. But I also really like the look of it. So... It works both ways, basically. But these pebbles do not wick. So above the pop pot, it, uh, the arcade should, and especially the... Uh, the older part of the arcade should stay fairly uh, dry. That's what we want. We don't want to start any rot, of course. So just a bit of pebbles here and there. And now we have a nice top layer. So the next step, what I do with, uh, with uh, Phenoliopsis is when I start to uh, let them adapt to uh, the new system is uh, give them a uh, flush with some RO water and some a little bit of seaweed in there. But that uh, is always uh, something I do at the sink, of course, but otherwise we would have a problem here. <laughs> so I'm going to take the camera and you can, uh, can see what I do. It's very simple, but I just want to include it so you see basically every step I take to get those uh, arcades adapted to, uh, to the new system. So now we are at the sink, as you can see, I hope that it's light enough, I think it is. I have some pots laying around, don't mind them, I have washed them, they're just drying off and then I will put them uh, back in the cabinets, of course. But I just have some RO water here in this uh, plant waterer thing, I cannot remember the name of it. <laughs> the uh, appropriate name and this is the algae that i like to use it's from biobiz so i shake it a little bit and then i'm going to put in a little bit of that seaweed mix in uh here in this water and i only uh, have that that seaweed i don't put anything else in it just a little bit like this i'm going to flush it so I don't need much, but if some rooting hormones uh, keep staying in the pot, that would be nice, of course. And therefore, I always use just a little bit of raw water with some seaweed. And I really enjoy uh, and I like the brand, the Biobis. It's very, uh, my arcs do respond to them very well. So here we go. Just a rinse of that water. So we get the dust out. Now a bit closer. This is just basically what I do. I try to read every, especially the pebbles, to have some dust on them. So, uh, and just flushing it through. And that's it, that's enough. So I'm letting it drip. I don't want too much water in the reservoir. There's still a little bit water left. I had that mount sitting in this pot. I'm just using the same uh, pot for this arcade. But now it's up pot it. Yeah. So there we go. Try to get as much water out as I can. 
because this orchid is not used to it. It's now also stressed, so I first want to see some root growth in the pot before I even think of uh, about filling up a reservoir. As long as I don't see alive new root tips in a pot, I don't uh, give it a reservoir, I just water it once a week with only RO water and seaweed, just to get it going. So that's basically what I do. So now I'm going to put it back in the greenhouse. So let's have a look where I did put it. And of course, don't forget the tag. I, uh, like I said, made my own tag. So let me just put a date on of the repot. And I thought it would be nice to uh, have it with these uh, two spotted ones. So here it is. And hopefully it will grow at least as big as this one. So I'm going to uh, put a tag in. Uh, that's not a handy place because there's just one root, of course. <laughs> yes, this sticks. There we go. So here you see it's beautiful modded leaves, of course. Absolutely beautiful. So yeah, let's hope it will uh, take off very uh, quickly, we hope. <laughs> and also I'd like to mention that uh, this is my fail wall, but I don't put it straight up. Um, maybe I keep it there because these fails do uh, bloom as you can see and uh, even this uh, Cerulejana next to it. But just a tip, if you just repotted your orchids, don't put them in too much light because this is also a very large um, stress factor. So for example, if you would have a Cattleya that would like a little bit more light than it would get here, just get it growing and establishing and then slowly build up the uh, light levels. Just a little tip there, I found that too much stress is not well, so I'm going to, uh, not good for your orchid, of course. So let them uh, be there. Like I said, I'm going to water it uh, when I see those roots uh, growing really into the media. And then I know they are growing and I can uh, give this a uh, reservoir because then the roots will uh, start to become water roots. They are now not water roots, so therefore I'm just slowly building it up. I hope that uh, does make sense. And of course, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And we will uh, do some updates. Probably uh, when I uh, am starting to fill up the reservoir, you might uh, want to know when that is. It may take uh, one week or a few weeks. I, I don't know. Every orchid is different, but we will uh, see in the near future. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked this video. Give it a like if you did so. And please, if you didn't already have, consider subscribing to my channel. That would be really awesome, of course. <laughs> and for now, I hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye-bye.